If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. 17 rare earth elements, metals with unique magnetic and luminescent properties, are the hidden drivers of our modern technology. From the colors on your phone, to the motors in electric cars, and the magnets in headphones, rare earths are essential, yet invisible, in daily life. Their reach extends to national security and green energy, powering everything from missile guidance to wind turbines. China dominates the rare earth supply chain, controlling mining, processing, and refining, turning these elements into powerful tools of global influence. Understanding rare earths is key to grasping the vulnerabilities and dependencies that shape our technological world. On December 12, 2025, China announced a sweeping set of new export controls that sent shockwaves through global markets. These rules specifically target rare earth elements, vital resources that power everything from smartphones and electric vehicles to advanced military hardware and renewable energy technologies. The new regulations don't just cover the raw materials themselves, but also the powerful magnets and components made from them. These magnets are essential for high-performance motors, wind turbines, and countless electronic devices. What makes these rules so significant is their unprecedented reach. They go far beyond traditional export quotas or tariffs. Now Beijing has the authority to decide who can access these materials, even if they're just a tiny part of a finished product made overseas. This means that a single microchip or motor containing a trace of Chinese rare earths could fall under these restrictions. For companies in the U.S., Japan, Europe, and beyond, the new reality is clear. To export any product containing even the smallest amount of Chinese rare earths, they must now apply for a special license from the Chinese government. This process is complex, time-consuming, and fraught with uncertainty, as approvals can be delayed or denied without explanation. The rules are especially strict for products with military or advanced technological uses. Licenses for these applications are almost always denied, effectively blocking access for industries like U.S. defense contractors, aerospace firms, and high-tech manufacturers. This move directly targets sectors that rely on cutting-edge materials for national security and innovation. These latest restrictions are part of a broader pattern. Over the past decade China has steadily tightened its grip on the rare earth supply chain, investing heavily in mining, refining, and manufacturing. Today China controls the vast majority of global rare earth production, making it nearly impossible for other countries to secure a stable supply without Beijing's approval. The message from Beijing is unmistakable. If you want access to the world's most critical materials, you must play by China's rules. The global supply chain now runs through the heart of China, giving its government unprecedented leverage over international trade and technology. As a result, the global tech industry is on high alert. Companies are scrambling to assess their supply chains, searching for alternatives, and bracing for potential disruptions. The era of easy access to rare earths is over, and the world is watching to see what China will do next. In the quiet town of Veldhoven, nestled in the southern Netherlands, a technological revolution is underway. Here, ASML, a company that few outside the tech world had heard of until recently, builds the world's most advanced photolithography machines, towering complex systems that are the beating heart of modern chip making. These machines are not just impressive feats of engineering, they are the essential tools that enable the creation of the microchips, powering everything from smartphones and laptops to cars and medical devices. Without these machines, the production of cutting-edge chips would grind to a halt. They are, quite literally, the backbone of the global semiconductor industry, supporting the digital infrastructure that underpins our daily lives. Each photolithography machine is a marvel of precision, containing thousands of components and using rare earth elements in its powerful magnets and ultra-precise optics. These rare earths are crucial. They allow the machines to etch impossibly tiny patterns onto silicon wafers, enabling the production of the smallest, fastest, and most energy-efficient chips ever made. ASML is the only company in the world capable of producing extreme ultraviolet or EUV lithography systems. These machines are so advanced and so rare that only a handful of chip makers, giants like TSMC, Samsung, and Intel, can afford and operate them. This monopoly makes ASML indispensable to the global chip supply chain and gives the Netherlands an outsized influence in the world of technology. But this dominance comes with its own set of challenges. 
U.S. policy has restricted ASML's sales of its most advanced machines to China, aiming to slow China's technological rise. Now, in a dramatic twist, China's own export controls on rare earth minerals threaten to disrupt ASML's supply chain, putting the company in a precarious position. If the flow of rare earths from China is cut off, ASML's ability to deliver its machines could be severely compromised. This would not only impact ASML, but could send shockwaves through the entire global chip industry, threatening the supply of chips that power our modern world. The company that once shaped global tech policy now finds itself vulnerable to the very supply chain it helped create. ASML's future, and the future of the world's digital economy, now hangs in the balance, dependent on the fragile threads of international trade and geopolitics. As tensions rise and the world watches, the stakes for the entire semiconductor industry and for the technology that shapes our lives have never been higher. The flawless operation of ASML's machines depends on rare earths at every level. Neodymium, dysprosium, and terbium create the powerful magnets that move wafers and optics with nanometer precision. Rare earths also enhance the lasers and optical coatings that make EUV lithography possible. Even tiny impurities can ruin a chip, making the purity of these materials critical. China's new rules mean any component with Chinese rare earths could be delayed or blocked, threatening ASML's production. A supply chain dependency has become a strategic vulnerability for the world's most advanced technology. If ASML can't get rare earths, the global rollout of new chip factories grinds to a halt. TSMC, Samsung, and Intel's expansion plans depend on a steady flow of ASML's machines. A shortage would choke off the supply of advanced chips, driving up prices and forcing tough choices about which products get made. AI, cloud computing, and high-performance research would all suffer, slowing innovation worldwide. Consumers would see higher prices and delays for everything from smartphones to electric cars. The West's efforts to secure its chip supply chain could be undone by a single bottleneck rare earths. The irony is clear, securing one supply chain has exposed a deeper vulnerability in another. The United States is in a high-stakes scramble to rebuild its rare earth supply chain, a sector that is absolutely critical for everything from smartphones and electric vehicles to advanced military technology. In recent years, the U.S. government and private industry have poured billions of dollars into mining and processing operations at sites like Mountain Pass, California, the only active rare earth mine in the country. This renewed focus is not just about economic opportunity, it's about national security and technological independence. The stakes are higher than ever, as rare earth elements are the backbone of modern innovation and defense. To jumpstart domestic production, the government is offering unprecedented support, guaranteeing prices, securing long-term contracts and providing incentives to make American mining and processing viable, even if China tries to flood the market and drive prices down. These measures are designed to give U.S. companies the confidence to invest for the long haul, knowing they'll have a stable market and government backing. It's a bold strategy, aiming to break decades of dependence on foreign supply chains and create a resilient, homegrown industry. Across the country, new facilities are springing up to separate heavy rare earths and manufacture the powerful magnets that drive electric motors and wind turbines. But building this infrastructure is only part of the challenge, developing the technical expertise, training a new generation of workers and establishing reliable supply networks will take years, if not decades. The US is essentially trying to rebuild an entire industry from the ground up, and the learning curve is steep. Meanwhile, China is tightening its grip on the global rare earth market. Its recent ban on Chinese nationals working in overseas rare earth projects is a calculated move to keep critical know-how and advanced processing technology within its borders. This policy makes it even harder for American companies to access the expertise they desperately need, further widening the gap between the two countries. Despite bold government action and significant investment, the U.S. remains years, perhaps even a decade, away from achieving true self-sufficiency in rare earths. Many facilities are still under construction, and production lines are just beginning to ramp up. The road ahead is long and filled with obstacles, from technical challenges to global competition. For now, American technology and defense industries remain vulnerable to supply disruptions and policy decisions made in Beijing. 
The chips, magnets, and components that power everything from fighter jets to smartphones still rely on materials that flow through China's hands. This dependence is a strategic risk that the U.S. is racing to eliminate. The race to secure America's rare Earth future is on, but the finish line is still a distant goal. Every day counts, and the clock is ticking as the world watches to see if the U.S. can catch up before it's too late. Europe faces an even tougher challenge, with fragmented efforts and little domestic processing capacity. Even with rare earth deposits, Europe must send ore to China for separation, a process now blocked by export bans on technology and equipment. The EU's Critical Raw Materials Act aims to diversify and recycle, but new mines and plants face years of regulatory hurdles and local opposition. Recycling can't meet demand for high-tech magnets, leaving industries like automotive and wind energy exposed. Recent price spikes and production cuts have been a harsh warning. Europe's industrial future now hinges on supply decisions made far beyond its borders. The continent must confront the limits of its market-based approach in a world of strategic competition. China's export controls are a calculated move, not a reckless gamble. The goal isn't to collapse global supply chains, but to gain leverage, retaliating against Western tech restrictions and reminding the world of China's central role. By targeting inputs for advanced semiconductors, Beijing is engaging in precise reciprocal deterrence. The case-by-case -case licensing process gives China maximum flexibility, rewarding allies and punishing rivals without a blanket ban. This uncertainty itself is a weapon forcing companies and governments to tread carefully. Rare earths have become a powerful bargaining chip in the high-stakes negotiation over the future of technology. This isn't just a battle between governments and corporations. The impact will reach every household. Rare earths power the devices we use daily, from smartphones to electric cars, and disruptions will mean higher prices, fewer features, and slower innovation. The green transition depends on rare earth magnets for EVs and wind turbines. Shortages could stall progress on climate goals and energy security. Our globalized supply chains have delivered innovation and affordability, but at the cost of resilience. The current crisis exposes just how fragile and interconnected our world has become. The struggle over rare earths is a struggle over the future of technology itself. Its outcome will shape the lives of billions, 